Hi, I'm Maine and this is Time Lapse Laboratory. Today we're looking at one of my favorite fruits, the pineapple, and what happens when you leave it out in the hot Maryland sun for 50 hours. The original point of this video was to look at ants filling up their gaster or abdomen, that last part at the end of the ant, with pineapple juice and fluid from the pineapple that I had placed outside. I shot this at one shot every five seconds and only intended to shoot for a few hours, looking at both the drying out of the pineapple and how the ants interacted with the fruit. After a few hours, I realized I hadn't really gotten the footage I was looking for and decided to leave the pineapple out overnight, shooting at that frame rate. You can see here in the first few hours that the ants are finding the pineapple and beginning to feed. If you take a closer look at the back section of the ants over the course of one to two seconds, equal to about five minutes in real time, you can watch the back of the ant fill up with fluid and sometimes even see the yellow fluid of the pineapple juice shine through the ants gaster. I timed the filling of various ants throughout this footage and averaged it out to be about five minutes in real time, sometimes a little bit longer and sometimes a little bit shorter. Given that I shot 38,486 frames over the course of the 50 hours of shooting, there are many places that I've significantly sped up the playback because without it, this set of footage would have been nearly 19 minutes long. When there was something interesting going on, I did slow the footage back down to 150 times normal speed so that you could see what was happening, for instance in about 10 seconds. If you look at the center of the pineapple and then slightly to the right, you can catch a few frames of a spider ant mimic. In 50 hours of shooting, these are the only frames of this spider I was able to capture, and I wasn't even aware they were living in the area until I shot this footage. Although we're looking at the six hour mark, I didn't actually realize what was eating the pineapple here until rendering this footage out. I want you to take a close look at how clean the wood sill that the pineapple is sitting on is before the snails and slugs start showing up to eat the pineapple. The mucus these gastropods produce is a gel polymer and it's very sticky to the touch. Given how long these gastropods spent feeding on the pineapple, this effect was amplified, and throughout the course of filming, lots of debris was dragged onto the pineapple and onto the wood sill the pineapple was sitting on. I've always found the feeding mechanism of gastropods very interesting. I've filmed marine snails cleaning glass on this channel before, so I was familiar with the radula, which are the teeth-like protrusions that are in a snail's mouth that gastropods use to pull off food from the surface they're feeding on. In order to better find this food, you can see that the snails have two sets of tentacles. The upper set are optical tentacles and have a small rudimentary eye spot on top of them. The lower tentacles are used for a variety of other functions including taste, touch, and smell although both sets do have a variety of sensory capacity and function. I noticed that when the slugs are feeding, the tentacles are almost completely retracted, especially when the slug is inside of a hole that it's created. I also found that interesting that the slugs tended to go to a similar location that had already been fed on by other slugs. I'm guessing this is because the enzyme present from the other slugs makes those sections of the pineapple easier to feed on. Unfortunately, I didn't realize until later that there's a small piece of grass growing up directly in the center of the frame, as it wasn't there when I set up the shot initially. You can see in the lower left hand part of the shot that an ant gets caught in one of the larger slime trails that had been left by one of the slugs. I've sped up some of the daytime shots to show off the dehydration that happened with the pineapple throughout the day. It's also at this point that I realized that there was a plant growing up in the center of the shot and I removed it. Although there was some ant activity throughout the day, given how hot it was outside, it was significantly reduced. I thought this was a good place to speed up the footage and show off the dehydration of the pineapple. Different shooting speeds and time lapse facilitate and show off certain subjects better. This is definitely an area that I could have elected to go with a slower shooting speed, as in less frames taken per minute, as the dehydration of the pineapple is something that takes a few hours to notice. The ants and gastropod movement is definitely something that lent itself to a faster shooting speed. Had I gone with a greater interval between shots for these dehydration sections, I would have been left with a lot less footage that needed to be processed. This 50 hour shot from this camera resulted in 98 gigabytes of footage, and at the point of making this video is the largest collection of still frames I've ever had to work with. I found the size difference of the slugs very interesting throughout the entirety of this footage. This piece of pineapple was less than two inches across, and you can see that some of the slugs that come and feed on the pineapple are less than one inch long, and others are well over four inches long. It's at this point in the review of the footage that I realized how much debris and slime had been left by the snails and slugs on the pineapple. Several millimeters of debris had built up over the course of just over a day, including grass, stones, rocks, and even a few ants. If you look to the left, the large slug that just came into frame appears to have a gash in its skin. This is actually a pneumostome and is the slug's respiratory pore underneath the mantle. In this footage, it was really only visible on larger slugs. There are a few other slugs later in this footage that you can clearly see this respiratory pore located on. Because of how much of the bottom of the pineapple chunk had been eaten out at this point, you can see a lot more movement on the top of the pineapple every time something comes and touches it. 
The slug in the foreground and the slug that just came to the back of the pineapple were two of the largest slugs I observed in this footage. I was shocked that they were able to eat a hole clean through the center of the pineapple in under two nights. I've sped up the last 15 hours of this footage to just under 10 seconds to really show off how much a hot summer day dehydrates the pineapple. I learned a lot on this project, specifically with regards to controlling shooting speed. I overshot this project so much that I actually needed a new computer to handle all the footage. Here's all that footage played back in reverse at 12,000 times normal speed. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's the best way to support the channel. You can also support me on Patreon at Timelapse Laboratory. You can also find me on Instagram at Timelapse Laboratory. Through Patreon, you get access to behind the scenes footage for things that never make it into full releases, lots of extra footage, as well as Q and A's, and a lot of behind the scenes information about Timelapse Laboratory. Patreon also helps support the channel by giving me the ability to buy new equipment and pieces for these projects. Thank you.